Hey, Chris, how are you doing today? How are the kids looking today? <laughs> yeah, they got all their masks on, don't they? Yeah, I see you got yours on, too. I'm not, I don't have mine on right now. All right, so what are we talking about today? Oh, dividing decimals by whole numbers. Well, let me take over some of this presentation right now on the screen, all right? Um, number, um, we're going to start off with topic 5-4, dividing decimals by whole numbers. Okay, this is kind of an introductory lesson, okay, Chris? Is that all right? Okay. All right, so anyways, let's tell them what we want. You know, let's start the lesson. All right. Um, wow, it's not moving. That figures. Uh, I'll just sweep it off to the side there. Now, there are a couple things to remember when dividing with decimals. Uh, there's a Nearpod. Do you want to pause for the Nearpod? Okay, we'll pause. All right, so anyways, um, the Nearpod was um, answered by saying no more whole number remainders. Okay, so we're not going to use remainders anymore. Did you already talk to him about that? Okay. Okay. All right, the other thing that we want to remember when we're working with decimals and division is this. Your quotient needs to terminate, or it needs to create a pattern, or be rounded. And we're going to get to this, okay? Have you gotten to it already? Okay. All right, so the uh, third thing to remember is that we will use zero in the ones place if there are no other whole number digits in the quotient. Okay, so what does that mean? Ah, okay. All right, well, let's go into the book right now, okay? And the book gives us, um, can they open that page? Okay. The book then says, okay, dividing decimals by whole numbers. I'm going to get out my fancy pen here. Dividing decimals by whole numbers, okay? How can you write a quotient for a decimal dividend? And then it goes on and it gives you a situation where you have three friends received $2.58 for aluminum cans they recycled. Boy, that's a lot of money, huh? Is that all you get for aluminum? Yeah. All right. They decided to share the money equally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, they did it all together, right? So they decide to share the money equally. How much will each friend get? So this is a classic division problem, right? Um, they've got the, when you look at it, they've got the little model set up there that represents the money. They have the two holes, which is the $2. They have the five tenths, which is the five in the tenths place or the 50 cents. And then they have the eight hundredths, which hundredths are pennies, right? Okay, so there's a Nearpod. Do you want me to stop for the Nearpod? Okay, I'll stop. You can pause me if need be. All right, well, anyways, let's keep moving. Okay, so now we go into the what do you think? Well, we think this. Are they thinking this, Chris? Okay, well, anyways, they think find $2.58 divided by 3. Estimate using compatible numbers. So should they estimate? Okay, all right. And so then they show the whole process by which they estimate, and it comes out, it looks like it's coming out to three groups with all the same amount. And then what it wants the students to do is to use the estimate to start dividing. So why is estimating important? Oh, because it gives them a starting point to divide. Okay. Ah, look at that. Near pod three. Do you want me to pause the video? Okay. All righty. Back to the book, right? Okay, so how can you write a decimal quotient when dividing a whole number? Well, when you look at the first example they give you, they say 180 divided by 8. Okay, step one is estimate. Well, they estimate the answer. It looks like they're using the compatible numbers of 8 and 18, okay? Or they're estimating 8 into 18, which is 2, okay? So that 2 is actually going to be the starting point for the actual division, which they do. And then they go into step 3. And step 3 is important because they are annexing a 0, so in other words, what's happening there, kids, is you get down here, and we're not going to use remainders anymore, but 
you've run out of digits in the dividend. So we have to annex zeros so we can divide until we get a terminated decimal. Did that explain it well to them? Oh, well, they heard it before, so they should know it. Okay, do you want to pause for the near pod? Okay, cool. All right. That kid's not paying attention. Wasn't paying attention. All right, never mind. Let's keep moving. All right. So, there are three basic problem situations when you divide a decimal by a whole number. What does that mean? Oh, it means there's going to be three situations they got to deal with and make sense of. Ah, because this is like math in the real world, huh? And math is everywhere, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, anyways, the first situation is problems with terminating quotients. Okay? You're going to have to just sometimes, you know, that's one of the situations. And that's a good situation, isn't it? Yeah, it ends. Another situation would be problems which requiring require annexing one zero to terminate. In other words, those are kind of like, you know, easy to solve because you get that zero, bring it down, and the problem ends, okay? Um, problems which require more than one zero to terminate. So what happens if they keep adding zeros and zeros, Chris? Uh, they should eventually decide to look for a pattern or round it to the nearest hundredth or thousands. Okay. All right. Do you want to do some example problems with them? Cool. All right. I use the word cool a lot. That shows how old I am. I should be like saying something jiggy or something like that. Anyway. All right. First example problem, near pod five. Um, this is a problem with a terminating quotient. Okay. So kids, uh, Mr. Trill is going to pause the video. You do this problem. Okay, well, how did they do? Did you show them the answer, or do you need to pause the video again? Okay, all right. Let's go on to the next problem. Near pod six, problems which require annexing one zero to terminate. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and let them do that problem. Did you show them the answer, or do you need to pause it again? All right. Near pod seven. Problems which require more than one zero to terminate. Ooh. Pause the video. All right. Did you show them the... Yeah, okay. Or, yeah, no. Okay, move. Pause. Okay. Oh, near pod eight. Okay, near pod eight. What? Why do we learn this? Ooh, that's a good question, Chris. Why do we learn this? Ah, we learn this because math is a part of life, right? And this is just problem solving. Even if it, they never use the actual calculations, they kind of looks like they realize that math is a problem solving process that thinks you teaches you how to think. It doesn't teach you how to talk, <laughs> but it does teach you how to think, okay? All right, near pod number nine. Here we go. Who gets a... What does that mean, Chris? Who gets a special treat? Wow. Ooh, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm out of here. I don't want to get involved in any special treats. It's COVID. They'll probably have to eat them underneath their masks. Anyways, and by the way, that's a nice fancy mask you have. See you, kids. That kid wasn't paying attention. You know that, don't you? All right. Bye.